Hey everybody, it's Harry from Celebrity Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. I'm doing a viewer request today. I, a lot of you have asked me, Harry, can you show us how to cook a beef clot? We're going to do a little beef clot episode. Uh, we're going to do a rub that is Texas inspired, show you guys how to make a vinegar type of mop. We're going to cook the beef clot, which is very, very similar to the brisket. You've seen my 40 other brisket how-to videos already. So in this episode, we're going to change this pace up a little bit, show you guys how to cook this wonderful cut of meat from the shoulder of the cow that has tremendous flavor, but a lot of connective tissue. We'll do a little beef clot perfection video for you. Let's go ahead and make our Texas style rub. We start off with about half a cup of kosher salt, coarse ground black pepper, about two thirds of a cup. If you don't like celery seed, don't put celery seed. I put celery seed for extra special black belt flavor. Maybe about eight of a quarter cup or so. A little bit of white pepper. I'm gonna guess this, one and a half teaspoon. Add some chili flakes for a little nice kick to it. I'm guessing maybe about two tablespoons and some granulated garlic about a quarter cup I like it garlicky if you don't like garlic don't put so much but I like garlic mix it up you can mix uh, many different kinds of rubs and this is just one iteration of the rub you can pretty much do anything you like so long as you have some uh, kosher salt some pepper that's the basic you can actually forget about all the other ingredients just use kosher salt and black pepper and you get a great result let's make the injection for the beef clot now i'm going to use a, a can of uh, beef broth to start about half a bottle of any kind of dark beer at this point in time the saltiness is not salty enough so you can do a couple of things uh, you can add salt to make it twice the saltiness of ocean water or you can add a little bit of beef base. Since I have a beef base here, this is very salty. I'm gonna add it to the uh, mixture here. What, four tablespoons of beef, ba beef base. We wanna get the beef injection to about be the twice the saltiness of the ocean, about six to seven percent. Ooh, that's about right. The uh, dark uh, beer gives a nice hint of flavor to it. This is very similar to injecting a brisket, so this can be also used on a beef brisket. We're gonna use it on a beef clot today. Let's make the beef mop next, which is a beef spray. I'm gonna start with some dark beer. All right, about half a cup. About a uh, quarter cup of vinegar. I'm gonna eyeball it. Okay. I'm also gonna add a little bit of uh, Italian balsamic vinegar. And this is a really pretty good one. You don't have to use a good one if you don't have one, but you know, any kind of vinegar will work. But I'm just gonna mix it up. So we get a little bit of a black mop here and a little bit of uh, maggi soy seasoning okay, one teaspoon so after you you have this uh, mop here you can add a little bit of water so i usually put about maybe about half as much of water before i get started let's trim up the uh, beef clot and uh, before we do that we need a sharp knife i'm going to use a dell strong boning knife this is a rapid steel sharpener i'm going to run it a few times to sharpen it first 20 pound boneless meat from the shoulder part of the cow. And when you lift it up, be very careful not to get any of the uh, purge spilled. So here's the purge. You want to make sure that you dispose of this safely. You never want to wash your meat. I like to do a light trim on the beef clod. Just want to remove any excess uh, fascia, silver skin like this one is tough. So what you is a beef clot, you might be wondering, it actually comes from the uh, shoulder muscle. It's boneless and it's typically is really huge, about 20 pounds worth of it. It's good for slow smoking and uh, it's not so common nowadays because brisket is all the rage now. But uh, this is actually has intense beefy flavor and it's got a little bit of a leaner texture compared to, to brisket. And uh, you can eat it like a brisket, but it's actually superb 
on sandwiches. The uh, shoulder clot is a group of muscles that can be separated and uh, actually cut into steaks. So it's quite common to fabricate or cut the uh, whole shoulder clot into different kinds of steaks. And uh, for those of you who are super nerdy, who are butchers, you have to go to the NAMP. This is known as the uh, American Standard NAMP 114 for those of you super nerdy people out there. And uh, the NAMP 114 says that the shoulder clot has uh, approximately like five muscles, but three three major groupings. So I'm going to talk about what the groupings are. If you don't like this part, just skip forward to the cooking portion. We're going to inject this after we trim it. Well, it needs a long, long cook. So we're going to have to cook it about, I don't know, maybe 20 hours or so, get it to be super tender. This is not something you can rush. This is more kind of a labor of love. And if you have time, it's really fun to cook a beef clot. It's, it's a, a little bit less expensive than brisket. And for a, just a change of pace, you can uh, cook a beef clot since uh, you've already seen my 40 plus brisket episodes. This is something that uh, you've asked for, which I've not shown you, but uh, this is a good eating piece of meat also. Just trimming off all the fat here, silver skin. All right, that's good enough. We'll put it in the pan and inject it next. All right, flip it over and I'm gonna kind of dry the other side. I leave the fat cap on this side here where the hide is so you can trim it off if you like but I don't. I just use this to protect the meat kind of like the fat cap on the brisket. Let's inject the uh, clod now with our salty liquid injection here. Get a little bit of beef Vaseline on the plunger. If you guys like uh, this kind of injector, I have an Amazon store. A lot of the gear I use that I like that I've torture tested over the years. Uh, I have about a couple hundred items on my uh, Amazon link in, uh, in the description below. If you like any of the stuff I use, uh, you want to you know, test, check it out, go, go look at the link. It's going to shoot it up liberally with injection, filling up the pores here with our dark beer and beef broth injection. You can inject it with the grain or against the grain. This one, it doesn't really matter since there's a lot of muscles in here. When I compete I, on a brisket, I like to inject with the with the grain. It's just the way I do it. And this is a lot of meat, so if you want to cook for a crowd, this is definitely something you want to consider doing. You can shred it and then make sandwiches. Absolutely amazing. We have about 20 ounces uh, of injection in here. I'm just going to put a rub that we made on. You want a very nice thick layer. And it's going to go on really, really heavy. Since the injection is in the middle of the meat, uh, it should be salty enough. I'm not gonna bother to kind of season the other side, just one side is fine, since we have a lot of salt already in the injection. We're putting a lot of rub on because it's a huge chunk of meat, all 20 pounds worth. All right, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit and then apply some more rub. Uh, I like to let this rest in the refrigerator. If you can let it rest overnight, even better. But if you don't have time, uh, just put it, cook it right away. But I find that it tastes better when you let it rest overnight in the refrigerator. The salt is going to be able to be absorbed and it will have a little bit more flavor if you do that. Our pit is up to temp, about 250. I'm going to be cooking on the Weber smoke fire because uh, it's going to be a long overnight cook. And uh, this is a really convenient way to cook without having to watch your pit as you can watch everything on your cell phone through the Weber Connect app. We need to spray with the mop. We are at the 13 hour mark with uh, almost one bag of uh, GMG premium gold pellets being used. We're still running nicely at 235. My hopper is almost empty now. So it's taken a whole bag of pellets to cook the uh, clot. As I told you many times before, uh, when you want to check for doneness, don't rely on a thermometer. Your best tool really is going to be a bamboo skewer. So what we're going to do is at a 13 hour mark, it looks about done. I can see the crust has set. So a couple of wet spots here, but that's okay. We're going to probe it and see how tender it is. going to probe it. It's pretty hard still. So you want to get it to the point where the bamboo skewer goes in, like it's going into a jar of cold peanut butter. All right, so I'm going to probe it. This part is pretty soft. This part is pretty soft. Hard. Very hard. 
very very hard soft hard hard okay so what can you tell from this exercise i've probed all the different muscles across the plot and they are all at different levels of doneness now using a bamboo skewer will allow you to ensure that when you cook the beef clot completely perfectly you will get the tender parts throughout the entire muscle groups now if you use a thermometer like this you can also do that uh, you can poke it and you can see this one is at 153 which is hard this is pretty done I'm at 192 which is pretty soft and you can see here this is also not so well done and I'm gonna poke here 167 68 160 151 157 right so you can use a thermometer but a better tool to use is using a bamboo skewer I've taught thousands of students to use a bamboo, bamboo skewer that way you're gonna get the perfect amount of tenderness onto your meats all the time consistently a hundred percent at the 13 hour mark looks like uh, we have no oil here and a little bit of ash and that's it so it looks like the uh, pan underneath the uh, clot is catching most of the liquid here's a beef clot 16 hours later, it took a long time. Crust is set. We're gonna give it a slice now, and we cooked it completely uncovered. I'm gonna cut it in the middle here. See all the cross section of all the different muscles. It's super juicy. See that? Super taste, tender and juicy. And look at that smoke ring, absolutely gorgeous. You can cut a uh, beef clot according to the muscles, but I'm just gonna go slice it and uh, into slices like a brisket. I'm going to cut one cross section from the right and one from the left. All right, let's give the beef clot a taste test. There are actually quite a number of different muscles here. I'm going to try to eat my way through a few of them to give you an impression of what it tastes tastes like super beefy flavor I can taste a hint of the injection and that uh, dark beer with the beef broth uh, has a really really great flavor has a nice texture also on the inside delicious okay let me eat this one now on this side a little bit more tender on that side the first sample is chewy but delicious I'll try this one here Very good. So this is probably from the petite roast area. Very tasty, delicious. Let me see if you can find the uh, the flat iron. It is a little bit of a flat iron right in the middle here. Super good. Here's how you cook a beef clot. You get a lot and a lot of meat. Very strong, beefy flavor. This takes a long time. This took about 16 hours to cook in the pit, around 235 degrees. I didn't want to go any higher because I wanted to kind of cook it low and slow render all that collagen into gelatin so it's nice, moist, and tender. Mr. Beans is waiting for his share, so let me grab a couple of choice pieces for him. Let him sample a little beef shoulder clot. All right, Mr. Beans, this is not brisket, but something new today, some uh, beef shoulder clot. And uh, I got you a few little samples here. Go ahead and try. Okay, go. Go, Beans. Charring down the different muscles of the beef shoulder clot. He's probably wondering Hey, this doesn't taste like brisket. What is it? It's a little bit more chewy, maybe a little beefier. What do you think, Brins? You like it? Okay, he's licking the plate, so there must be a sign of approval. You like it, Beans? I think he does. Thanks for stopping by and joining me for my beef shoulder clot episode. Had a lot of fun making it and hope you did too, watching some of the black belt tricks I used on the beef clot to get the best results. Please like, subscribe, and share. And to all my Patreons out there, thanks for helping support my channel. And until the next video, we will see ya.